Good evening, sir. Good evening. Uh, we have with us Mr. Ravi Purohit, Vice President of Wipro, who is an RPI graduate of the batch of 1992. Welcome, and it's uh, it's a great pleasure to be here. In fact, thanks a lot for arranging uh, the <coughs> the meet and also bringing three different batches together. So we we get to see you know the excitement in other batches also. So thanks a lot again. Thank you so much, sir. This is an e-guest lecture we're recording as a part of the initiatives of students alumni cell. Thank you so much for cooperating with us. Uh, so firstly, we would like to know, this is on behalf of all the students of IIT Kharagpur, how would you describe your journey from IIT Kharagpur to being at Wipro? So uh, the way uh, I, would begin, uh, I would explain is what I'm doing now, mm -hmm. and then I will explain what, uh, what made me reach there. So right now I am a global head for the Oracle you know, practice mm -hmm. at uh, Wipro. So whatever work we do for, for, you know, for our customer with the underlying technology is Oracle, mm -hmm. I'm responsible for that at Wipro. And uh, <coughs> for me to reach here, uh, it is a leadership role. It's a techno leadership role mm -hmm. in a way. So I have begun my career in the actual technology side of things in terms of programming, learning the languages, and so on. And then I moved into delivery and project management roles. After that, uh, I got into uh, <coughs> the retail and consumer goods uh, industry vertical, did uh, manage a couple of accounts uh, from a delivery standpoint, then from a sales and account management point of view, and uh, uh, after that I became business leader in, in both of these industries. I've also had experience in managing the pre-sales part of both the industry-oriented divisions as well as technology oriented divisions in past and that's what has led me to where I am today. <coughs> I have done MBA in 94-96 from IIM Bangalore and uh, part of my uh, making into this uh, success also you know, goes to the fact that I understand you know, uh, you know, the management part of uh, the career. So that's, that uh, is a short summary. So what is the true motivation that drives you through your journey? The true motivation actually is the is your liking for what you are taking up, hmm. and you need to have a passion, which is the single most thing that will drive you and drive you long. Hmm. Second is perseverance, uh, and again, uh, hard work definitely pays, and if, and if you are lazy, definitely you'll be left behind. Uh, so, uh, you know, combination of passion and perseverance is what is the motivation. Uh, so on this note, what have you learned from IIT Kharagpur, the tr one true quality that made all the difference? See, one true quality is the, the courage to be able to pick up things and, and do it. Hmm. So I got to learn many new things which I never thought I could do. Hmm. Uh, so that's one single quality. Other than that, the fundamental characteristic of uh, <coughs> you know competitive spirit was already there. Hmm. Uh, it's there in all of you hmm. uh, and all of uh, you know, my other students friends that were with me. Mm. Uh, time management is another thing that we learnt and the discipline uh, both in terms of managing classes as well as doing extra class activity or extracurricular activities. Mm. I think blending both of them together and still doing well in both the fields was, uh, was time management is another thing that I took from. So what is, what have you learned from the education aspect? How, how fulfilling is it to you in, in your life now? How much do you take from it? Do you use any of what you've learned during your degree here in IIT Kharagpur? Yes, definitely. There is a lot of fundamentals and uh, foundational elements that mm. uh, IIT has uh, taught us. So, to an extent, when I, when when I you know, go back to work, my mm. ability to you know get things done uh, is is uh, is primarily because of the learnings I've had here. Mm. And uh, getting into IIT those days was uh, was a decision that I made uh, because I got a lot of exposure to that while working in electrical. I, I could have continued in the electrical engineering field, but mm -hmm. that change I made during third year or fourth year when I kind of started liking that part of uh, you know, technology more than the core electrical engineering. Mm -hmm. So you've done an MBA after your uh, B.Tech degree. Uh, how did you make that decision in your life? That's a very good uh, and important question. And 
<coughs> I had an IMB reunion uh, uh, in December. Mm. So this, uh, many people were pondering upon this this yeah. as well. So we did it. Of, uh, I did it after working for two years in Bombay in TCS. Mm. So that was the time where I, I learned technology and I could work as a programmer and I could see many senior project managers, mm. leaders, you know, managing businesses. Mm. Uh, at that time, there was there were many people in my my age group and my batch. Many of them were moving to US or had already moved for mm. doing MS. Many of them were you know, doing MBA, some of them were doing MTEX. So it was a time where we had to make a choice and uh, and I could uh, you know clear cat and get into uh, I am Bangalore. Mm. So it was a very timely you know change. And uh, if I had not taken that, I would have gone to US for one of the long project at TCS. So I, do, I had to make a choice and I made that choice. So And I, I definitely liked it. <coughs> Many students at I am Bangalore also reflected on this and felt that the best time to enter is to have some experience. Mm. Then you'll be able to you know realize what what the MBA course is about, because that then you can reflect on the, the mm. case studies that MBA education was very case study led, and people were uh, able to relate, at, at, uh, you know, based on their experience, right? That they have seen it in the past. How different is the workplace scenario? It is uh, it is very different. Okay. It is very application oriented, very result oriented. The the world is very rapidly changing. Uh, so the you have to constantly unlearn and learn. So one good things about books and the studies is your speed of learning multiple subjects at the same time. Then the next semester comes and so on. Mm -hmm. But uh, more than that, application-oriented knowledge will be more critical for. So what do you think should should be a change in the education process, especially in India? If there is a way for you to get uh, maybe alumni or some other organizations to give you more exposures into how the real life will be after a couple of years that mm. that would be good mm. so it could be probably get you to visit them or you know get them to visit you here or the best is if you visit there and spend a week or so mm. that you don't have to necessarily spend 3 months it could be a week as well you know in different different industries then you'll get an exposure mm. of what what uh, what the real life is so based on your experience of interaction with the people of our generation what have you what is your what would you conclude how different are we from how different is our thought process from that of yours is it for the best is it for the better definitely it's for the better but uh, the, uh, from a <coughs> fundamental age profile perspective you have more exposure to technology mm. we guys used to have more exposure to newspaper and reading and so on mm -hmm. and so forth but you're more uh, aware informed and because of that, there is a lot of uh, independent decision making as well. But the maturity in decision making probably will be similar. You know, I would not say that would change. So at, at, at the same time, you do need a guidance. So finding that right mentorship for you is very important. For, you know, and, and I do see that sometimes there is a tendency to feel that the boy or a girl has grown up, but then that person, that, that boy is still a boy and you need to train the boy mm -hmm. to become a man. Right? So you do need uh, that kind of uh, guidance. How do you think this environment has brought about a change? One thing that I have seen is that uh, there was uh, lots of uh, outside class extracurricular activities from which I got to see people who are excelling in specific fields like football or volleyball or tennis and so on. Mm -hmm. Uh, another is a team spirit that is something that is phenomenal because uh, working in corporate life in a collaborative way is very very critical mm. for, for any, anybody to, to grow mm. so those uh, I would say competitive spirit uh, natural talent you know discipline mm. and obviously you know the, the collaboration those are some things that that uniquely you see here So how do how how should we decide what we want to do in our lives? Many students are good at many things, but they're interested in something else. How is the demarcation made? How should it be made? See, most of you mm. will be good at at least three to four things, and mm. it's natural because you are you are talented, you're gifted in some way. Mm. But at the same time, you have to uh, nurture each of those gifts that you carry. There are untapped gifts that you will have, right? So mm. you should be open to discover that. Yeah. Uh, from a perspective of what to do, you have to 
differentiate between a career versus a hobby mm. and that selection eh, you have to make mm. and sometimes you may like two careers which is not possible mm. it may be so that you can do it sequentially but mm. at a given point in time you will have one career mm. you may not have two you cannot be a journalist at the same time you cannot be a cricketer yes. it may be it's possible in cricket uh, like two fields uh, but it's uh, it, you have to give a 100% attention to, to your career so the other things where you are good at you have to uh, keep it as a hobby uh, till the time that uh, you want to make a switch there are few individuals like arnold schwarzenegger who has done three careers yeah. in his lifetime right so some of that is uh, definitely inspirational it's mm -hmm. possible so there are people who do it and you know, they retire out of corporate life early and do something else mm -hmm. many people in army do that too mm -hmm. they they get out uh, in about 40s and then they do something else mm -hmm. uh, in their career so, so don't uh, uh, you know, but the first thing that you choose for the next five to ten years has to be very, very, you know, well thought through from from your perspective. You should like it. That, that's a very important thing. So the decision that you made to go further for your MBA, uh, you must have been confused around that time, right? How did you exactly pick that up? There was a uh, you know confusion, but if I if I see. <laughs> What, uh, where I was working, mm. I could see that there is definitely a bigger and bigger expectation that's going to come. Mm. And uh, it is important to understand how things are managed. There are many things that from a technology perspective uh, we know, but it doesn't teach you, uh, for example, legal. How does a legal thing work? How does a finance work? Uh, how does marketing work? There are many aspects of a corporate life which you don't get exposed to. So uh, that made me, you know, decide that yes, you know, you should go for it. Uh, if I was to do a, you know, all-round career, if you don't do it, it does come to you, right? After working for a couple of uh, years, mm -hmm. you will learn it. So it is not that you have to do an MBA, but if you do an MBA, it, uh, you know, you learn faster. It's like uh, you don't have to study engineering to be an engineer. You can actually learn it yourself, mm -hmm. right? You can learn many things yourself. But a, a coach and education definitely is a faster and a structured way. Of uh, you know uplifting your you know, capabilities in a certain area. What where do you see IIT Kharagpur say in 20 years? Or? See in 20 years from now, uh, uh, definitely things will be much different. The the, the nature of technology will be different. Uh, so I think IIT would be focused on those areas. And we read the foundational stone, of the mm -hmm. main campus yes. as well as the old campus and. Uh, uh, I think that is one thing that uh, Jawaharlal Nehru has also said very well that this institution has always been created to think something which is 20 to 30 years, you know, down the road, and uh, that fundamental, you know, choice. I think uh, uh, the, the uh, you know, team responsible for making the choice <coughs> of the uh, courses or new faculties is, is very very critical. Right? So you should invest in those areas which are going to happen in the next 10 to 20 years. Yeah. On this note, what advice would you give to all of us, the students who are currently pursuing their B.Tech degrees, planning to go to jobs, higher studies, achieve many things in life with bags full of goals and thoughts? See, first thing that I would say is uh, clearing an exam is a good discipline. You have to do it in your life also. Like, for example, if we were to win a, win a customer, we have to go through what is called proposal, which is an exam for us. Mm -hmm. So we have to check all the box, you know, do, <coughs> dot all the I's, cross all the T's, so that discipline, execution, rigor is, is important. And somehow, while people may disagree that exam systems are not good, it helps you in structuring your, your thought process in a certain way, right? So doing that is very, very critical. Other would be, you know, uh, stay focused, come out well, and try to see the application-oriented uh, learnings in the field that you choose to go for. Mm. Those are two key elements. Thank you very much. Sir. It was really nice talking.